Right, so let's uh, let's get cracking on. So, thank you and welcome everyone to the webinar uh, hosted by My Work Papers. We are actually going to be looking at um, how Excel uh, plays a role in the modern accounting world, accounting practice. Before we go into it, uh, I've got some uh, very special guests. I'll just introduce myself very briefly. Uh, so, my name is Mabu. I'm the sales manager for My Work Papers, based in Queensland. Uh, near the Gold Coast, actually, so very, very hot and uh, comfortable over here. Um, I will to ask uh, I will ask Kevin Bungard to introduce himself very quickly. I'm the Chief Product Officer and Australian General Manager, um, and uh, later I'll be taking you uh, through a little bit about what we've been doing in terms of the product development. Um, my background um, is that I was previously the CEO of Class. I joined that business in the early stages of, of that and built the business up until when we listed it. And um, uh, yeah, that was a, a great introduction to the industry and uh, uh, my work papers was a, a logical next step for me. So yeah, it's been, been great developing this product. Thanks, Mama. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kevin. And our special guest. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna ask you, Tyler, to talk about the bean counters and of course you and your background as well please so go ahead yeah thanks uh hi everyone um welcome to this webinar i'm i'm quite excited to be working with the guys from my work papers on their uh latest release um as mabu mentioned i'm the one of the partners at the bean counters um we're a small firm in sydney that uh help businesses um accounting firms um you know, uh, make things more simple. Uh, we help automation and um, inst people install systems so their finance and accountants have a, a better time in life. Um, my background is I did about seven, eight years in the consulting world at uh, Deloitte and KPMG, you know, very much focusing on business services. So I think I've done my fair share of balance sheet recs in the time. Uh, did about 12, 13 years in financial controller, commercial manager or CFO roles um, in Melbourne and Sydney, Australia. Um, and, you know, really, really found a niche of trying to um, help businesses with messy and troublesome um, finance systems and tech and HR processes, you know, really get, um, get to the next level. So, you know, the business could really hum and people could make better decisions. Uh, for the last three years, we've uh, I've been uh, back into the consulting market as a partner, either at Rothsay Accounting or at the Bean Counters. Um, you know, and we work with uh, some really large accounting firms. We work with uh, mid-size and small accounting firms, um, helping them, you know, choose and install systems, um, and really trying to focus on how do they make their people and their teams' lives better. Um, but we also work uh, very closely with, you know. Uh, clients in business uh, in, in industry so you know printing businesses um, we've done that we've done a lot of uh, services entities as well and and that you know it's it's quite true even those businesses are doing uh, work papers at the end of the year so still very much in that world of um, helping people do good quality accounting um, and you know have really good controls and systems that make their lives a little bit better uh, and as Maboob said uh, he's up in Gold Coast I'm here in uh, sunny Bondi at the moment. It's a pretty lovely day outside um, and have been here for since 2014. Right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tyler. That's really a really good insight into your background and where you've come through. Um, fine to us, so uh, thank you. Let, uh, what I will do is uh, I'll now share my screen. So there's a few things we wanna share with you today. So let me just go and do that. So just as a, oh, the details here, you'll see um, Tyler's contact details, et cetera, as well. But um, all right, so what are we looking at today? Um, we're looking at my work paper. So we've had a, a, a really new um, innovative way to integrate Excel into, digi into the digital work paper environment. What this means ultimately for an accounting practice is that it's much faster and easier to use Excel to do the calculations into your workflows. And this can pre-populate the data accurately uh, to reconcile your balance sheet and tax calculations. 
But um, th there are quite a lot of people who are already familiar with my work papers online today, but there will be, of course, and there's a, a, a number of newer guests as well. So I just want to give you an uh, overview of my work paper. So what are we all about? So my work paper is, is uh, 100% online work paper platform so the ideal situation so ultimate situation is that we standardize your process uh through an electronic work paper situation where you can import in your own customized information as well uh, and we deliver a great level of efficiency so we see typically between one to three hours of time saving per job when you're using my white papers uh, and you also have a great level of visibility, whether you are an accountant, a senior, a manager, or a partner of a firm, you can go into a lot of depth of detail to see the visibility and the workflow being complete, or you can look at it from the other end, which is the, the top level view of exactly what's happening within your business structure as well. So we offer that kind of a, uh, a level of visibility. And, and now, one, being... one of the things I... One of the things I, I love about that screen, Mabu, is, um, you know, the first thing I always did is when I was a partner looking at accounts and tax returns is I always wanted to see if everyone had finished every, you know, work paper that they're required to do. This this screen, like, I, you know, I love it. Like, for, for the people that don't know, this is just, this is just a web page, you know. It's not an installed app. It's it's not a copy-paste from an Excel book. It's There's literally a web page you jump in to, you know, can, to see progress of how far someone's through on the work paper. Um, you know, and it, it goes right from like a graduate accountant all the way up to a partner or manager, you know, being able to jump in and look in at the, the progress of how far someone is through. Um, you know, if I look there, fixed assets being 17% reconciled, you know, if that's a 500 line item fixed asset, you know, I might give someone a nudge to maybe start that earlier you know, or, or get onto it. So, so yeah. you know, it's a, there's, there's some really cool little features about uh, my work papers, especially this like review screen. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thanks, thanks, Tyler. And we'll be going into some of the details of that shortly as well. But of course, being a, um, a, a firm that purely focuses on work papers and nothing else, we're in a really great position where we actually offer a work paper template for every eventuality that an accounting firm uh, has to deal with. So from, you can see on the screen here, we've got a list of audit templates, um, starting from companies, not-for-profits, associations, super funds is a large area for us, trust audits as well. So whether it's real estate or legal, legal world, and also international templates as well. What we'll be talking a fair bit about today is the, the year end. So with the year end, of course, you've got the list of the different templates that we've got in here. But also a really key important focus is of the, the periodic, which allows you to become a, a, a virtual CFR or go into doing business advisory. I know that this is an area that uh, Tyler is really keen on. So um, these kind of functionalities are also available. And of course, from the, the smaller end of the spectrum, even personal tax. One of the greatest things about my work papers also is the fact that it's an incredibly flexible platform so not only uh, a large number of our clients will use the platform as is with the content that we already have but also really a large number of uh, clients will also customize tweak change remove add content that they're familiar with so the example of that is uh, you may use the platform to get the efficiencies get the visibility and get the standardized process across your entire business but at the same time, you can retain some of the work papers, some of the, the uh, checklist that you and your team are familiar with to retain that familiarity within the platform. So making it your absolute own based on your own practices, procedures and, and, and formats as well. Yeah, and I think that's really important as well, because one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we're leveraging um, those um, the uh, products that you have already got in your business, those work products that you've invested that all of that time and effort into. So where you do have, uh, you know, if you've got uh, particular vertical industries, you know, maybe you work in the film industry, maybe you work with uh, a lot of uh, sort of agribusinesses, uh, you might have worksheets specific to that uh, domain and uh, they can they can be included. You know, the, the workplaces, the, the 
processes and the work papers related to those can be uh, incorporated into uh, my work papers. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so it gives you some uh, examples of the, the kind of look and feel of my work papers as well. So we have really good monitoring tool. We've touched on this already. What you've got on your screen at the moment is the monitoring of your business. So you can see there's the names of all the different files, uh, the client files that, uh, that I have access to. You can see there's completion statistics around there. You're also able to use the buttons along the top to filter and slice and dice the information to find the relevant things. So for example, if I was only looking for Superfund, based files that so I can filter that if I was wanting to filter the super funds based on my colleague Alex who works on those files and it will filter that further as well so there's a lot of different ways you can actually monitor uh, your workload and of course from this page you can literally right click and open a new tab go straight into that file and that's of course the beauty of having a 100 percent online platform i will stress that i haven't mentioned it before you can ask questions to any of any one of us in the panel um in the question box so just please do type in your questions and we will try to answer them we may well answer them near the end but do keep them coming so we'll be monitoring those questions while we're uh, while we're here yeah, man. And, and I'll, I'll touch on the slide too like i a lot of the accounting firms i work with you know, people really focus on how do we make a manager's life better, you know, because I remember when I was a grad, I probably had two jobs on a month, you know, maybe three. And, you know, I've worked with some managers at like top 10 firms and, you know, they've got hundreds of jobs on. And the, the thing I saw is, you know, across the country, every one of them were doing it different. You know, someone had Microsoft lists, someone had Excel, some people were using like, um, teamwork workflow things and and click up and all these types of management tasks one of the things i really like about my work papers is is i can kind of see if i'm a manager where all the jobs i'm listed as a manager i can kind of get a list of those and i can kind of can see their completion status and i can filter it you know i'm very aware that that file i can sort you know alphabetically i can kind of do a bit more work and, and see my team's workload and my workload here um which is just miles away from what I used to have to do in Excel. You know, I was, I was, you know, managing, you know, and on whiteboards, I was, you know, trying to yeah. make sure I kept, kept all my jobs in track, you know, and this, this does actually give a really nice central, you know, database of what are the year end kind of work papers I've got to, you got to nail before we can, you know, lodge accounts and tax returns. Yeah, of course. And uh, uh, these updates are, of course, 100% real time and live. So any kind of changes that I make to that, uh, the M Robbie Super Fund, the moment I make change, it will update. Even if someone's looking on a different screen on a different computer, it will update that statistic based on any kind of completion that I've been up doing on my end in a different part of the world if need be. So it's absolutely mm -hmm. live. Um, so also, you, know, you can see all the different types of formats. So these are the screen here is more to do with the super fund side of things. So if you're an auditor uh, and you get audits, a uh, super fund auditor, I should say, if you get audits from people who are using class, Supermate, uh, BGL360, it, we integrate with all of those platforms as we do with Zero uh, and QuickBooks and others as well. So um, really, uh, we've got a, uh, we work really closely with APIs with all these other uh, providers, and you can extract data from them very easily and readily as well. So uh, we also have uh, within my work papers, we have a built-in communication portal. This is incredibly powerful. And I think, uh, Tyler, I, think, I know you're keen to talk about this area, but the way to describe it is um, a lot of customers would say to us about, uh, hey, I, they use uh, Outlook. Uh, and one of the experiences that they, they see in Outlook is that uh, clients continue to reply, reply, reply to an email, and that trail could be six months old. Right? And when you go to search for a particular reference within those emails, uh, you get 20 different emails and you have to go through each one of those to find the actual item that you're looking for. And it's an absolute nightmare. This, of course, uh, eliminates that. You can not only uh, ask questions of a client, uh, whether the client is a business owner, whether the client is a, uh, is a uh, super fund administrator. You can send information to a client. You can ask questions to a client. You can also receive answers and receive information, documentation, et cetera, back through this portal. Uh, and I know, Tyler, this, this, I think you're probably itching to actually say something here as well. Yeah, and 
for me, I, you know, I, I like a client portal, but, you know, clients are clients, you know, some drop them in information in a shoebox, some love an email, some, some send you a zip file, you know, the best give you access to a, you know, a, a, a fi- online finance system with uh, a folder saved in there. But, you know, and I, I like that, but the real strength of this one here is like my control as a manager or partner on my review points. You know, I, I don't take for granted the prepared by, updated by, first review, second review, and completed. Those those things for me are huge because it kind of shows like we've got actual quality in our, you know, financial statement review and tax process, tax return review process. Um, you know, I love that when you mark something as completed, it's locked in my work papers, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But the amount of times in my life, and honestly, it happened, happened this morning, you know, I I went through like a, a zero file with one of the guys on my team. And, you know, I, I told him a list of things to do the other day, we wrote it down. And then, you know, we had to go back through that list. And he was like, oh, I, I forgot to do that one, you know, because it wasn't on like a central database. It wasn't Mark, there's something here to kind of complete because, you know, we haven't got my work papers in our firm. You know, we, you know, we're, we're not a tax lodgement firm. And if I had something that in, in my earlier days that had all my work papers that people had to write and their mark is resolved, it would just would have made the process a lot more easy for them to be successful and also a lot easier for me to say, yes, they've kind of done it right. And I really like the uh, the resolved noted comments as well because yeah. if a staff member, the amount of times as a manager, I'm like, hey, don't forget to you know accrue electricity expense, and they might write done, you know. And I want to see you know how did you do it, how much yeah. did you accrue, you know, like really actually provide some kind of value there. Um, you know, if you can link it through, that's that's the win. This screen for me is like great for manager partner review quality. Great, thank you. I knew you'd have something to say on that one. Um, <laughs> Probably too much. We've, <laughs> we, we touched on this earlier as well, the customization. It truly is something that's uh, colossal within my work papers and it is a very flexible uh, uh, area. So we've got some clients who will change everything, uh, all the content. Um, others will, like I say earlier, they will take as is. And Kevin, I think you wanted to talk about this area as well, isn't you? So um, with the types of customizations you could do. Uh, look, I'll, I'll come back to it when we talk about the, the Excel Connect okay. feature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Um, we already covered this area as well, the monitoring of uh, the work in progress. So you can really see where the bottlenecks are. You can see who's completed what level of work when you expand each of these folders. So on the left-hand side, firstly, you've got an overview of the file, uh, how much work has been completed, how much is still remaining. And of course, you can see where those key bottlenecks are. So if I opened up the income folder, for example, I'll see which uh, which work paper within the income folder has actually been completed. So there, therefore, I can then focus myself or my team to actually jump in, uh, in which case I can use a review points for going to, uh, for, to highlight actions that I need them to take, et cetera. So it's a really good area. So you can use this to monitor as well as start your communication with your team as is needed. Yeah, and th- this is for one client, right? Like, is is a good way to perfect. Yeah, you know, this is going from you know from the whole list of screen into into a certain client. And if you're a manager, you know, even if you're a grad, you can kind of see, oh, I've got to do some more work on equity, or I've got to do some more work on receivables to get that 100%. Because I find the hardest thing when I get a young accountant starting is they don't quite know the whole picture. They don't quite know. Um, you know, they know the bank has to reconcile and they know accounts receivable has to reconcile, but they don't quite know how to do a reconciliation in there. Everything has to be kind of signed off, you know, before they send it for review. The thing I like here is it helps guide them in a process of you need to do these tasks before you give it to manager review to hit the firm's quality level. And for me, that's kind of doing my job. It's tech taking away a painful part of management and also like elevating graduates, you know, junior accountants, senior accountants to a level where they just know without having a doubt what they've got to do to, to kind of get to uh, a finalized product. Um, and I think that holistic view where really this product streamlines or fast tracks people's understanding of the quality needed to do a file rather than just, you know, 
task by task, they start to elevate their understanding, which I, I really like. And I wish, honestly, I probably wish I had in my early days. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank, thank you, Kyla. Other things that we've got uh, as well is we've got a built-in PDF editing tool. Uh, you can see there's a lot of markups you could do. You can even put in signatures. There's stamps, rubber stamps that you can apply. You can also reference other work papers within the file as well. Uh, in terms of integration, we also have Office 365 integration, and this will be demonstrated a little bit as well later on. Um, so our Office, as long as you've got an account with Office 365, you will link that to my work paper. So no, you're no longer having to work on an Excel spreadsheet, save it on your desktop, upload it into any kind of a platform. Instead, you're saving a colossal amount of time and you're using a live browser-based Excel spreadsheet or Word document, whatever you're using, um, and is edited online within the browser. So you don't have to leave my work papers onto another platform or another tool in order to do the work where, where you do the work. Mate, more, um, more, more importantly, I've got like, if I'm a reviewer, I can I can see I've got an audit trail up top of who it was updated by. I've got a lock that it's completed and I can see the answer in front of me. Like I don't I don't have to like hunt to, to try to find if this work paper is right. You know, that's that's the win for me, like having a cloud and Excel really well integrated. And that's, you know, one of the big changes that, you know, is part of this webinar is instead of having to go to an outside document, Excel is like deeply integrated into this process. And it's just it's just cool to see, like, it takes the best of both, both um, I suppose, products and, and puts them together, which I, I like, you know, makes, yeah. makes the review better. Yeah, absolutely. And what we've done, of course, the, the purpose for this webinar today is to highlight that, that even deeper or higher level of integration of Excel that we have just developed. Uh, and we'll be talking about this next. And as we are talking on this big subject of uh, Excel, I'm going to come to you, Tyler, uh, as I have done throughout the, the, uh, the afternoon so far. What What is it? What is it about Excel that you accountants just love so much? What is it? Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's what we, what, we're, what we use all day, every day. I, I don't think there's been a day in in the last 22 years of my working life that I haven't used Excel in some way. Um, it it really enables like a flexible kind of approach and it helps us calculate, um, you know, really complex things. And once you get good, like, you know, I'd, I'd call myself good, probably an eight out of 10, you know, maybe a nine to a rookie, but, you know, I, I'm, no, I'm no guru. But once you get good, you can really start solving complex problems time and time again, utilizing Excel. But the thing I find that goes really well, I, I love it for ad hoc tasks. I love it for, um, you know, things that I can have a little bit of loose control of, manipulating data and the like, um, you know, thousands and thousands of lines. But I'm really, I struggle with it in the delegation aspect as a partner, Um you know, I, I struggle with it as a um, as an all-encompassing solution for everything with a number, you know, because we just lose a lot of control. Um, and the worst thing I've ever seen, coming like I came in as a CFO to three or four companies in my time, the worst thing was coming into a, a business and the old CFO had built a, a crusty macro that did attempted to do half his job that broke. And... You know, I, I remember doing commission calculations and he was like, oh, you just click this button and it works. And he spent three hours trying to fix the macro when I could have probably fixed the answer in an hour. So, you know, it's got huge benefits. And, and your hourly know, rate was a bit there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wasn't cheap. Um, and so those, those types of things, like, I think it's got a huge application. I love it for one-off tasks. I love it for quick and dirty. But it really loses a little bit of control um you know in the, in the the upper end yeah um i think in, in in a world where basically you know there is an app pretty much for everything but excel still has that sort of 
flexibility. And if, if you're just doing something once or you're doing it a handful of times, then, you know, Excel is great. I mean, obviously, if you are um, uh, doing a fixed assets register and it's massive and, you know, you then at a certain point, you want to go and get an app, right? You don't want to just do it in a spreadsheet. But if it's if the, if the uh, trust or whatever has only got a few assets, then, you know, keeping that in spreadsheets fine, right? So, I mean, I guess, Tyler, you would, you would, you would come up against this uh, a lot in your um, work where you're having to kind of recommend to people, well, hey, maybe you need to get an app for that at this point rather than persisting with spreadsheets because they're, they're okay up to a point, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember working at Gaydon's Lawyers, um, fantastic law firm, but, you know, we were on... Uh, Did we mention them by name? <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're a great business. I, I loved working there. Um, you know, but there, there, was no, there was nothing negative. We were on a system called Open Practice for Finance, and it just didn't have an asset register. And I came in, you know, and the asset register was off by a couple hundred thousand dollars. And, like, wow. you know, I just we just had to figure out why. We had about a thousand assets, the spreadsheet. You know, the old accountants just didn't do their job properly, you know, and, the, the, you know, that's this was part of the deal. But... Absolutely, yes, to your point, Kevin, is um, as soon as Zero started doing its asset register, we jumped onto that for our big clients. If they're, you know, a lot of them use asset accountant for their uh, asset registers if they've got incredibly complex, like more than five, 10,000 rows. Um, yeah. You know, but it, it really creates a better control aspect. You know, Excel, um, I, I say this all the time. I look at, um, you know, Excel work papers uh, every single week. And yeah. probably about nine out of 10 of them have got an error in there, you know, because it, it loses a control process just like that fixed asset rec. Yeah. Um, so I guess that was our starting point with with, with my work papers and Excel when we uh, we had integration already. Um, but it still did seem like you were in two worlds. You were either in like this world where we have all this good control of stuff that you've been talking about in terms of reviews and checkpoints and locking things off and um, this sort of online digital workspace. And then you would jump into the Excel world and everything was a little kind of uncontrolled. And, you know, in particular, um, when the Excel worksheets get to the point where you've got these sort of 50 tab monsters, um, you know, that's, that's really the kind of point where you think, well, maybe we've, maybe we've pushed this too far, you know, um, and people will get to the point where they're not sure, you know, it's like, have I got the, uh, you know, I've found the, is this the latest um, uh, version that I should be using? Uh, which tab do I use? I'm sure this, there was a calculator for this somewhere, but I'm not quite sure, um, uh, you know, where it is. I don't know where to look or whether they even got the, the right version. So that, that sort of version control nightmare is, is another thing about, um, you know, whether um, uh, as part of the versioning of it, um, uh, whether or not, um, you know, the, oh, the, you were talking about the errors, right? Um, maybe if you're just going to go to the next slide. Um, you know, the, uh, you, I'm sure you've all seen directory structures like this. I'm sure there's a bunch of people there being triggered by this because exactly as uh, Tyler was saying, you know, you, you suddenly come across one of these macro errors or a reference error and, you know, you, you kind of... Uh, break out in a cold sweat going, okay, well, there goes the next three hours while I figure out how to mm. debug this thing, right? So, um, and that's obviously when things have, have got too complicated. Um, and so part of what, what we wanted to do um, with Excel Connect um, was we really wanted to try and um, uh, address the, this kind of balance, like, um, we want to avoid the complexity, but still take advantage of Excel and use Excel when it's the right thing to use. So what we've done with Excel uh, Connect is basically within the work papers, within my work papers, um, we've got the right versions of the spreadsheets there. But part of our uh, work paper solution, all the work papers themselves are all version controlled. Um, and you, as a, you're, in your practice, you can, even if you're customizing those, you can track those versions and really make sure that any point anybody is doing the right steps, they're running the right process, and they've got the right version of the spreadsheet that they should be using. Um, we're able to pre-populate data into those spreadsheets as well. Um, and as we'll see, the other thing what we wanted to be able to do is really, really integrate the Excel tightly into the process flow. Um, and um, uh, that, that was really our starting point. Mate, Kevin, um, that, there's so, a there's something magical there, man. If we if we go one back on that, if I just look 
if I look at like time frame, um, Mabu, if you go one one tab up, right? If I look at the amount of time I've lost, um, yeah, the, the next one, I'll hit those three points. The amount of time I've lost as a reviewer, reviewing financial statements, I look at how much time I've lost trying to find the right version, you know? The the amount of times my team has said, ah, oh, I saved it on my desktop drives me absolutely insane, right? Like we've got all the software and all the servers in the world, you know, to make that kind of work. If you go one tab down, the, the next one for me is about like, how do we, you know, get data that is pre-populated? The amount of time in my life I've been dropping balance sheets and trial balances into a system. And the, these are my, you know, KPMG Back balance one. sheet wrecks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but even, even these, that's right. Like, you know, the, the pushing data from the system into Excel is an absolute time cost. And these, you know, this is something that my work papers has really been able to improve is getting all the trial balance data and pre-populating your work papers. And if I just look at those two alone, time cost wise, between, you know, the amount of times I, I try to find the right version as a reviewer and I'm... Um, you know, trying to run through, um, you know, making sure that the, it's the right financial information. That's just like, I'm saving hours on a job, you know, even those adding up, worst case scenario, I'm doing two hours of save time. Best case, I'm saving 10 minutes, you know, on every single job ongoing, periodic and month end and year end. Yep, yeah. brilliant. Um, and, and that's definitely the, the thing we were trying to, uh, as we were working with clients and sort of saying, how do we do a better job here? Because the feedback we would get from clients would be, look, everything's great when I'm going through the procedures and I'm thinking, but once I'm in the Excel world, now everything feels like it's a little disconnected from my my process flow. So um, uh, maybe if you just, uh, yeah, great. Um, so um, let, let's take a look at, of, of, of kind of what we've done. So we what we did is we took the um, 50 tab um, sort of spreadsheet. Um, and in my work papers, there are about, uh, we've got 40 odd um, worksheets that are spread throughout the um, workflow. And so you, you're not going to do all of them on every job. And, you know, one of the great things is if you don't need that work paper, um, we'll, we'll tell you that you don't need that work paper as you go through the process flow, or if you use our customizer, it'll turn off those sections. So, um, you know, it's not as daunting because you're only looking at the, the tabs um, uh, that you need to look at. Um, but what we're going to do in this um, uh, demo today is we're just going to look at the uh, tax reconciliation um, and we're going to say, well, okay, how do we get to the point where we get the tax rec done? Because normally what you would have done in one of those large spreadsheets is everything would have been kind of in uh, that one uh, uh, worksheet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the process here as part of the year end. Uh, we're in the income program and we're at a step where it's telling me that I have to do the dividends received worksheet. Um, and what we do with Excel Connect is because it's connected to the trial balance, it, it, one of the things it will do is it'll look at the key figure that you need and it will say in this case, um, Okay, I've got I've got some dividend income here, um, and that's telling me that this particular worksheet is required, um, that I need to do it as part of this step. Um, and uh, then all I have to do is, because I know this is required, I can click on that C4 link, um, and that will take me through to the particular Excel um, work paper that I need to do. Now, now Kevin, there's, there's forward, something Mark. cool there that, that I, I love is... In, in my world, I'd say 30% of the junior accountants I've worked with know that, you know, dividends in the set of financial statements are net. So, you know, for our, our tax return, they end up being gross and the franking credits, you know, um, become a, effectively a tax deduction. Now, one of the things I love there is the, the system's pushing, because there's a trial balance amount, the system's actually pushing someone through the process. So, you know, me as a manager, like I don't get to the process, I don't get to the review and go, you know, why haven't you done your dividend work paper? So it's actually what we're doing is setting controls and automations in the system to say, hey, you've got a number. Now let's do the work to make sure that number flows directly, uh, correctly into the financial statements, also into the tax return in the accounts. And you've got to do a work paper so you understand it. And I, you know, for, for me, I've trained, I think I've trained, 200 people on how dividends work. And I've worked with financial controllers 
they've been in businesses for 10 years that still struggle with the concept. They get salary and PAYG, but as soon as the word dividend hits, because it only happens once a year, they get a little bit more confused. They don't quite understand imputation accounts. So, you know, I really think what this does is it sets control so our, our junior staff you know, know the work they've got to do. And it actually helps you speed up your review and your back and forth. And that, that to me is one of those little magic control checks that Excel does not have. Yep, yep, um, brilliant. Um, uh, so in this case here, what we're looking at was we're looking at a, a, a worksheet that uh, my work papers um, provide. Um, so this is the one that's available sort of out of the box, but uh, Mabib mentioned the customization earlier. Um, and with the customization, um, there's no reason why this couldn't be your own uh, dividends worksheet. So if you've got your own worksheets for any of these areas or for specialist areas, you can incorporate those into your work like, uh, workflow. You can change the process. You can add in additional steps and say, hey, if at this point, uh, you know, there's some uh, amount in the in particular account, then do this other worksheet. So um, it, it's very flexible and customizable in terms of where you have your own specialized worksheets that you might use for the industries that you're working in. Um, obviously, dividend, dividend worksheet, pretty much going to be the same. I think everybody comes up with a, something fairly similar model. Um, this is the one that's out of the box. So um, what it's done is picked up the, the fact that that 12,000 that came through from our TB is obviously not reconciled out of the box because what you've got to do now is um, you've got to go away, find the supporting documents, um, and then basically populate the, the rest of this worksheet. Um, so you would go and do that, obviously attach those to the workflow and so forth. And then basically, if you've got it all sorted, uh, it'll tell you that the total amount reconciles nicely. Um, and then what the Excel worksheet is doing is, is then telling you, well, here's your total of, of, of TFN withholding and here's your franking credits. And those are two key outputs. And this is one of the key things that Excel Connect does because um, there are a number of products out there where you can push data into Excel or pull data into Excel from um, uh, Zero and other uh, ledger systems. Um, but what we're also doing is we're taking that data and we're pulling it back out and then incorporating it into the workflow. Um, so in this case here, once this is completed, if we go back to um, the workflow, what we actually see um, is that this particular um, worksheet now has been flagged as um, completed. Um, and it also gives us those key values that are outputs. Now, in this particular case, those key outputs aren't driving the next step in our process flow. Um, but we'll look at an example in a moment where that where that does. Um, these numbers we will come back to because they're actually these numbers are going to flow into uh, the tax rec that we're going to you know after we've done all of this work. The ultimately what we've got to pull it we've got to pull it all together into the into the tax rec. Um, but let's jump across to the capital gains tax um, uh, worksheet. So um, as we work through the process um, and go through the further steps, we get to the point where there's a process step around um, capital gains. Um, and we're not going to go into this E7 worksheet. Um, it, you know, it looks just another worksheet that we, you would complete that. Um, in this case, we've completed it. Um, it's come back. And it's telling us that yes, we've got um, we've got it reconciled, and we've got a capital gain amount of forty thousand um, dollars. Now, the next step in the process, though, is saying, well, look, by the way, if your capital gains for the year is over ten thousand dollars, then you need to complete an additional schedule. So it's kind of telling you, hey, now you've got to go away and, and complete the capital gains tax schedule um, to include in the tax return. Um, and there's a link then to that E1, which is the sheet you would, the schedule you would go and complete for that. So it's really helping to drive the process flow. And as Tyler was saying before, you know, as a junior and you're not quite sure, well, what's the implications of this? What's the next thing I should do? This is kind of guiding you through the process and um, taking you to the next step. Uh, now, as I said, there's about 40 different um, worksheets in my work paper. So we're not going to go through the whole year end process and look at all of those um, worksheets. That's a good couple of good examples of um, some worksheets. Um, and ultimately, what it's going to feed back into is, is, is the tax reg. So, um, and I know there's plenty of accountants out there spending a lot of time, you know, pulling these together at the, the end of the process. In this case, what we're doing is um, when you go into this worksheet in my work papers, a number of the fields are going to come directly in um, from the trial balance. Obviously, your, your profit and loss is going to come through. Um, but you can also see that this has been set up so that 
numbers are coming through from those other supporting worksheets. Now, if this is in one large um, worksheet, uh, those numbers would be coming through that be all kind of linked in the one worksheet. But what we've done is because we can break it into pieces, we get sort of more fine grain control over that. Um, but we can still have those numbers not only driving our workflow and driving the processes, but we can also have those numbers feeding back into other worksheets. So you can pull them into the, the later steps of what you need to do. Um, and in this case, we're bringing through the franking credits, um, we're bringing through the, the uh, capital gains amount. Um, and if we had other worksheets, it would we would have those. Um, so yeah, you would still have to obviously go through, complete the rest of the, the worksheet. Um, but um, a, a big chunk of this is already kind of completed for you and, um, you know, gives co comfort to, to people like Tyler who might be reviewing this, knowing mm -hmm. that, well, yeah, I, I saw you did the worksheet and that number has come from that worksheet. So I, I know that number's going to agree. That number's come from the trial balance. So I know that's going to agree. Um, and that's really what we we're trying to do with, with Excel Connect is kind of bring all those pieces together and give you the kind of, um, the best of both worlds in terms of the flexibility and the capability to use Excel when it's the, you know, the appropriate thing to use, um, but also really um, uh, keep, keep, keep that control, keep, stay, stay within the, the confines of a process that really, um, you know, you're not um, losing control of what the what should be done next, or who's where 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 the work is up to, and all those sorts of things. Because this again, all still gets tracked using that overall process flow. So, you know, in an Excel spreadsheet, very hard to tell whether someone's completed this tab or that tab or so forth. I mean, yeah, you can build a summary tab at the mm -hmm. front, but yep. again, it all just starts to get a little complicated, right? Yeah, um, that's that's, uh, that's the that's the key. Like that. That little that little point there, there's there was a screen, my boob. If you could go up, I think it's up one uh, tab. There's a screen there that would have saved me. God knows, I don't know. <laughs> I, I reckon it would be a hundred hours in my life. You know, wow. I've I've gone through the the fact that we've got a prepared by Alex Johnson, second of December. That that audit trail on work papers just doesn't exist. Right. It doesn't exist in Excel. You know, like Xero's got a fantastic audit trail on its transactions. You know, my old didn't used to have, you know, but having that on work papers is really good because me as a partner, I can go, you know, oh, Alex, you did the capital gain. And the amount of capital gain tricks that are in Australia and exclusions and things right. you need to know, they're huge, right? Like yeah. I've I've sat next to a tax partner, you know, at a at a company, and he was, you know certain that this 400 grand was fully taxable and I was like I don't I don't think so let's let's go have a look right had a chat with the owner and it wasn't taxable because of the couple of rules you know and he signed off the tax work paper and before you know those these types of things it actually if I'm a partner I can go who prepared the capital work paper and in my mind I can actually go do I trust that person on their understanding of tax Right. Yeah. You know, and if it's a grad, like I want them to have a crack. Yeah. Everyone's got to learn a tax rec. Right. But I want to be able to go, all right, Alex, you know, you did the tax rec. Right. Now let's go through it. I don't have to ask questions because sometimes I've had four people, like two juniors and two seniors, working on a complex set of books. And my boob, if you could go one tab down, um, there's, there's another one I really want to kind of flag up here. And to, to anyone new to my work papers, go one back up. So this is the big change that my work papers has done here right there. So in previous times, this Excel sheet in the middle here, that used to be a whole nother sheet and another tab in your Google Chrome or Edge or whatever it was, or Firefox, whatever on earth you use. Hopefully it's not Internet Explorer. If you if it is, poor thing. But, but having having like prepared by, reviewed by, all these audit trails of who has done the work and when they've done the work is key. I can see if someone did it at 12 o'clock last night. That, for me, is also important. I can start talking about, you know, are you, are you rushing to deadlines? Do we need to talk about prioritization? The second thing here is, as I'm a reviewer, I'm, I'm straight into the workbook. This is the big change that my work papers have done is it's, everything's in front of me now. And, you know, and, and Mabub, I'll, I'll say something you've kind of mentioned to me is, People don't have to be wedded to greens. 
You know, it doesn't have to have a My Work Papers logo. Like we've seen plenty of accounting firms that are like, oh, I want, um, you know, I want black, my logo and I want black headings with white writing. You know, you guys actually have that flexibility. So it looks like your work papers, it's got your controls. Yep. But the 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 last point I want to make there, if you go one down, my boob, yep. is, is about the pre-population. Now, this stuff is it just can't be glossed over for accuracy and also conceptually what people get wrong. So, you know, after after a few years of um, moving timing dis- differences out on leave provisions, you realize that, you know, an increase to the provision does this to my taxable profit, a decrease to the provision does that. So you start to learn it. But what these types of things do is it actually starts to pre-populate, you know, are these adjustments increases from uh, accounting profit to tax or is it a decrease? You know, do the franking credits, because like I know that franking credits increase my accounting profit to become taxable profit because accounting profit is, is the net uh, or the cash amount of the dividend. But when you're a grad, when some second year, some third years, and I'll be honest, some senior managers don't get that concept. And it's okay. What this does is it helps get half of that work done. And I really, really like the pre-population, especially that profit and loss. As soon as I look at my tax rec, the first thing I do is open my financial statements, see does that balance, open my client's file. I'll look at NetSuite, zero. QuickBooks, whatever they're on, and then see what that net profit is to make sure that kind of balances. Work, my work papers brings that through. So those those little things, having having like a really good connection there, it just can't be undervalued. The amount of errors I've seen that this will avoid. You know, if you're looking for a quality tax rec that people, A, can start to learn and speed up their learning, but also is more likely to have uh, a higher, a better outcome you know, that is more accurate. This is what these types of work papers can do. It can help guide you down the path. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, that is, I mean, that's the key thing that we talk about uh, when, whenever we're talking about subconnectics, that the time saving that can be made through the pre-population and the accuracy level going through the roof. It's, um, and, it's, uh, and we've got a, we've got a question here too from uh, Rob Cooper. For the pre-populated information, do these have active hyperlinks back to source? Are they editable? Um, it's a very good question. Um, so these pre-populated data, and, and Maboob, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, those pre-populate either to QuickBooks, Excel, or Xero. Um, uh, yeah, and so, yeah, they do. So then you can push back journals, et cetera, straight into those Xero files. QuickBooks uh, and other platforms as well. You can upload the CSV uh, from my work papers to do that. Yeah, I, I think the, and, and I, the question was more around uh, the, whether you could link back to those things. So um, there are reference sections where you can put the links to uh, where a section is. Um, you can't, from within the worksheet, click on that as a link to get back to the capital gains worksheet, for example. Um, you could... Um, put a note next to it if, you, if, if it's not clear um, that that's actually linking back to that E7 value. Um, uh, again, that comes down to you know, that's, um, uh, that, that, that's definitely something you could include in the design of your worksheet if um, you wanted to be able to do that. Um, all the references in the workflow steps, in the workflow processes, um, so when we were looking early, you could see they were blue and they had a, an underline on them. So all those references are links back to um, the source um, values, if you're linking through from, of your referencing things like values um, uh, in the TB, and they will link and take you back to the, the TB and or, or take you to the particular lead schedule if uh, if you're using those. Um, but yeah, from within Excel, Rob, you you wouldn't be able to link back to um, the source directly from within Excel back to the to the other one. Um, can can uh, I type over that? So if I want to make that 200 grand, 300 grand? You know, that's, uh, well, again, um, this, is, this is because we're in the world of Excel, you know, the, you, you can't type over it unless you unlock the worksheet. So um, <laughs> by default, because there's a formula in there, um, you wouldn't be able to type over it. But depending if people know the password to unlock it, then, you know, it's, it, it depends on how tightly you lock down your, your worksheet. So, yeah, ideally... Um, 
again, I guess because you know who prepared it, if someone's if you do look at it and someone's typed over the number, then you would you would query that. The great thing is that even if someone has gone to that effort, they've unlocked it, they've typed over it, they've messed it up in this particular version of the, the work paper that they're working on, it's only going to affect that one file. The next person who creates the next job is still going to get the standard one. They're going to get the correct version. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know you know, um, I know when I'm using Excel worksheets, it's like if, if if I need to find one, I'll go find the last one I did and then use that, right? Uh, with my work papers, because we use templated work papers, when you create the work papers, you will get a new version um, that you know is the right version. You're not going to copy someone else's mistake. Yep. Yeah, well, thank call. you. And good, well, good question. What yeah, yes. we, we do run regular webinars demonstrating the tool in much more detail as well. So uh, we, I will talk about that briefly uh, in, in a little while. So just to um, thank you for your input so far. Uh, so it's really, really, really useful. So to, just to give you a summarization. So what uh, what Excel, the Excel Connect does, it does, and my work papers generally, it does standardize your spreadsheets across the whole of your practice. And, and it does tame those uh, those crazy 50 tab uh, Excel spreadsheets. And it does give you much uh, greater control um, and a much bigger breadth and depth of visibility uh, that you that you need, actually. And as a result of this, uh, it gives you much, much greater uh, efficiencies across your entire plan, particularly if you do start using the different templates for the different areas of your work, whether it's super funds, whether it's trusts, uh, your individual tax returns, etc. So that visibility uh, and that efficiency of process across the board it does um, does make a difference. Now we are we do still ha have some allocated some time for a, a Q and A session as well. So get get typing on those questions. But, but just before we do that. Um, I am going to uh, put a little question on the screen here because uh, we'd like to know uh, if you, you know, if, if you are keen to talk to us a bit further. So if you could just look at this, uh, uh, the poll that I've got on the screen, and if you can just please quickly answer this. I'll leave this on here just for a few seconds. If you can put your details in there, and um, we will uh, react to that in the coming days accordingly. So please do uh, look at the question here. And do yeah, put your contact that. details in here as well. I, d I didn't know I'd be in on that. I, if anyone on the call, you know, we help, bus we help businesses do finance bus better. Um, yeah, is, is what we do. We specialize in, sorry, you go. No, no, go Specialize. Time, we love a bit of zero, but we really love working with accounting firms as well. Um, yeah. I don't know. I've just got a, I've got a passion for trying to make accountants' lives better because I've, I've had some hard times in my life on, systems that made my life my eyes hurt a little bit so yeah <laughs> yeah um so just a while while we're here as well um uh, we like i said we do run regular webinars on, on my work papers and uh, so just look at my myworkpapers.com ensure that you're on the australian page not the uk page uh, and uh, you can register for the various different webinars where we run into these things um also we we do give free trials to anyone who wants to jump in as well. So uh, contact us through there. You've got my details. Of course, if you wanted to contact Tyler, his uh, email address is on the screen for you now as well. And we will um, we'll get in touch. I might just leave that um, the poll open for, uh, I can see answers coming through. So I'll leave that open there for uh, a while. But I wanted to throw it out to the audience here uh, to see if there's any questions. There have been some questions that have been coming through. And I think I've got a colleague in, in the background that you can't see who has been um, typing away uh, uh, some answers, but they've not come through to the open questions. But I want to I wanted to throw a question to you, Tyler. So um, you're obviously a, a man who's crazily uh, fanatical about using technology to save time uh, yep, in an accounting yep, firm, yep. right? So in, in your view, how many apps should a, an accounting firm have or and what mm. you know yeah and what? Yeah, it's it, it, it's a big question. And you know I, I came from the world of one app. I remember when I started at KPMG New Zealand, we were we were APS and email and Excel, you know, but really mm -hmm. our app was was APS. Um, I, I kind of, I think about this on a phone is, is my 
best you know uh, answer to compare it is on a phone most people look between five and ten apps per day with with ease um as long as they connect and operate you know really well in in accounting firms i i typically don't like to see more than 10 um you know unless they're really really well integrated um you know and I, i'm almost discounting excel and outlook and stuff they're just part yeah. of our kind of day you know but if if people people quite happily have zero open on one tab, they might have you know FYI docs open on another. They might have um, you know my work papers open on another. They might have BGL for their super funds open on another. Um, yeah. You know, and then th- those types of things. If if you're working on three, four, five, it's okay. Um, I've seen some firms that have gone really big on the apps and they're they're you know the eight or nine. It yeah. all it does is it takes new starters a little bit longer to get used to it, but usually they pick it up after a period of time. Um, but I really, the ones I really do look at is if you're three apps and under, you're probably losing time, you know, and your staff yeah. could probably cut, you know, our rule is we try to cut 40% off people's day, you know, so they can add more value to clients or the business. But if you're if you're on two, three, four apps, you might be a little bit low. I think that's that's my gut feel, and you could probably save a bit of time. Yeah, probably leaning a little too heavily on Excel in that case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, imagine yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another question I've got is, um, um, where do you strike a balance? So let's say you're a you're a, a a single partner firm, and you've got one two staff, and you're trying to balance your heavy heavy workload with the desire to make a change and start using technology to. Um, incorporate into your business but the the pain that you have in your and the headache that you have in your mind is like do I have the time to learn new technology uh, uh, and the gains when will they come so any any thoughts around uh, what what's the tipping point for me to say yeah enough is enough with my current excel based technology let's let's go and take it up a step what's your what would be your thoughts around that yeah I, I I ask a lot of questions and of my staff using the systems more than me. I, I do a lot of sales. I do a lot of system kind of scoping. But, you know, I've got a team, uh, you know, sitting in the office out there that are heavy into systems all day, every day. Um, you know, and I really ask the question, do you like it? How does it, how efficient does it make you feel? You know, and I, I help them, like, go on their journey to see if they're like, oh, I heard there's a system, you know, and I'm like, cool, let's, let's discover it together. So, so there's that tipping point when I hear pain and when I hear people going, I, I just, I'm not happy with how we're operating on this. That's, that's definitely the the first point. The second one for me is like, if I'm looking at like my, my business and I'm looking at um, how we're interacting with customers, I want to be able to like, um, not, I don't have to be using the best tech in the world, but I want to be able to use good tech, you know? So my tipping point is like, when, when is good tech good for my clients? And that comes down to errors and accuracy, right? Like I hate giving wrong answers. Like I hate, you know, I'm pedantic making sure balance sheet balances, you know? It's one of the things that used to kill me about like my old is you could have a accounts receivable that doesn't balance to the balance sheet. Like I was literally looking at it this morning. And, you know, th- th- those yeah. types of quality control things, if it impacts my clients end result, that's really important to me. Yeah, that's that's uh, really yeah. Because this is the this is a pain and a headache that every uh, uh, every firm has, regardless of whether you're small or large. So it's. Um, uh, yeah, but I'm just going to answer painful. another. I'm just going to answer another question here because I know we're close to time. Yeah. Um, Tom was asking about whether or not the Excel data can be pushed back into journals. Um, and um, uh, no, it it doesn't do that at the moment. So then the, the numbers we push back into your process flow. But if you if they result in then you need to do a journal. So as a result of this worksheet, you realize you do need to do some journals. Um, there's a separate capability within my work papers where you can uh, create those journals, fix what you need to within um, the the TB within your work papers. Um, and then there's a separate facility where uh, those can, presumably once they're all signed off and approved by Tyler or whoever your manager is, uh, they can be pushed back into um, uh, zero. So we do have that integration, but that's a separate sort of capability. It, it doesn't go straight from the, the work papers. Yeah. And I'll tell you why I love that, because 
there are accounts in accounting that should be locked. You should never be able to yes. journal to AR, AP, bank, credit cards, <laughs> inventory without doing those things right. So it's actually a smart process that's a good control. You should always look at it before it bangs it back in. Brilliant. Right. Um, we are going to now close off. So thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Kevin. It's been uh, uh, really useful for me uh, personally, but I also I believe uh, there's been a, a lot of people who attended and right through to the bitter end. So thank you for everyone attending today and for registering. We will be in touch with you. Um, there is a lot of people here, so we will be in touch with you as soon as we possibly can. We will be hosting a webinar, particularly for our year end product fairly soon. So look out for that uh, and that will be emailed through to you soon. But uh, again, I uh, hope you can, uh, uh, there's a number of people who've responded to the poll. So I will close that now um, and we'll, we'll get back in touch with you. So thank you very much. Uh, have yourself a wonderful weekend and um, yeah, look forward to speaking with you all soon. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yes, thanks guys.